Welcome to another Tailwind video. Uh, this one's going to be on building a pricing table with Tailwind CSS. Uh, I chose this project because I thought it was going to be uh, relatively simple and it's going to showcase uh, how to use Flex and stuff, but it actually ended up being much more complex than I thought. Here's the inspiration. The link to this dribble shot is going to be in the description below. Uh, I basically just took these three as inspiration here uh, and created this. So this is the final product and it's uh, fully mobile responsive and I'll show you that after. Uh, it's got some transitions and it. it's really cool. Um, just before I get started, if you are interested in this type of thing, I will be making more of these. So do consider subscribing. Uh, it'd be really great to grow a channel around this. I have a lot of fun building these and uh, yeah. Okay, so let's get started here. Uh, so this is this is the starting point that I uh, I have now basically, right? Uh, this is the, the markdown of that layout course everything is completely unstyled because um, I haven't added any Tailwind classes into it yet. I did get a font from Google. Uh, I have font awesome for these little checkmark icons here. Uh, I also have Tailwind here. I do recommend using NPM for building anything like this that's going to be actually deployed. Uh, this is not very optimized. Tailwind itself and also font awesome are actually quite big. Uh, so you're going to want to do that. Maybe use purge CSS or something. Topic for another video. Anyways, to get started, I'm going to be looking at another monitor I have on the side here because it's very hard to write this and uh, and talk about it at the same time. I end up making mistakes, so I, I have the, the, the previous or like the completed version on my other monitor. Um, so we're going to take this to this, and the first thing we need to do is figure out the main container, so the body, right? So I went with max width uh, 3XL. It just looked the best. I thought it would, I thought it would be the best way to go about um, making a demo of this uh, and then I added MX auto to center it and I did BG gray 100 so that's what that looks like uh, continuing on there is the header so I did um, font bold text 3 XL and I added a margin bottom of 2 to kind of make that bolded text uh, as you see here and to style the bottom one, in the demo itself, the uh, text was a little bit muted. So I, I chose to use text gray 600, right? Uh, and there should be uh, a little bit of, of margin on top and bottom of this container here, obviously. Uh, it doesn't look properly spaced. Uh, what I opted to do here is just to add it right on the, on the containing div of the text. So I added margin top and bottom of 10. And I also centered the text. That looks like so. So that looks exactly like the, the final product, which is great. Continuing on, uh, this is where stuff gets really interesting. Uh, I just decided to make this flex, right? And so this contains three container divs for each basically section. And adding flex here will basically um, make them equal length columns within this flex container. This looks great here. Uh, we will need to add some some uh, spacing between the columns themselves, but this will be an issue later on when we are making this mobile responsive. So just something to note. I went ahead and uh, defined the, the widths explicitly. This is not going to change the way it looks right now, but it will uh, help when we're styling it for mobile. And then I added um, here. Well, we have a choice now. We can start with either column we want. Let's start with this one on this side here. So the ones on the sides are, are white and this one's purple to kind of emphasize the popular plan. So if we get started with that, we can make BG white. Um, I decided to make it rounded large so the corners are rounded. I also added a shadow. So that looks like so. If you'll notice, there's got to be some space here on the edges of uh, of each uh, column so we could add that using padding six all around that'll give it some inner inner padding and now we see the issue that I was talking about before where there's no space between the columns and we can fix that by adding a margin right of four I'm not sure if this is the optimal way of doing this uh, I usually space it this way and uh, I will have to add the same class to this popular column as well but not to the last one because there's no need to space uh, to add mar margin on the right side of it because it's the last element anyways. Um, I actually opted to add some hover effects 
to make it look cooler. Uh, so I made a shadow Excel hover effect. Um, and that's the only one for this element. However, when we hover over it, it's a little bit abrupt. Uh, this is a really cool part of Tailwind. From, for someone coming from the back end, uh, Laravel mostly, uh, I'm not really good at CSS. I do have a lot of fun building these, but um, anytime I can use something built in that's really easy to use, I really do enjoy it. Uh, so I use transition duration 100, which I would assume is 100 milliseconds, and then the in and out transition. So you can see that's much, much nicer. It's more polished. Uh, okay, now continuing down. Uh, this base and enterprise headings here, I wanted them to be a little bit more muted. So I went with a text gray 600, and I also went text LG. Right, that looks good. The pricing here is very interesting because the price itself, if we look at the final product, the price has to be black, this has to be gray. How I achieved this is basically putting a span within the P tag so everything's on one line and styling the span differently. Um, so the way I did this here is I went text gray 600 uh, and I added a margin top of one just to space from the, uh, from the heading there. And then I made the pricing font bold, text black, and text 4XL. So let's see how that looks. Looks, uh, well, looks identical, obviously, which is exactly what we're going for, so that's great. Continuing on, uh, this is going to be text SM. Uh, this is also going to be text gray 600. And also a margin, uh, margin top of two rather for this one. So that's fine. And now we get to the interesting part because if you look here, I'm using font awesome uh, check circle icon, which is very close to that inspiration on Dribbble that I used. Um, this is font awesome specific. So this is not Tailwind, don't worry about that. These are great icons. Like I said, they're just unoptimized. So there are optimal ways of getting them, uh, but there's a, a wide variety of them for free. So I do recommend them. Um, to style these, what I did was I made everything text SM, everything text gray 600 to give it a muted look, and a margin top of four, so it's spaced. Here, I actually opted to make the top and bottom margin of all of these elements two, so it spaces them out beautifully and it's very easy to read and probably the nicest way I could figure out to write those classes or add those classes in. And then here, this is pretty interesting. So I added a margin right of two and a margin left of one. The reason I did this is because I wanted the bullet point to be, or, or the icon rather, to be a little bit indented on the left side and then double indented here or double spaced between the text and, and the icon there. Uh, so, so adding a left of one and a right of two achieves this. It looks really great, in my opinion at least. Uh, continuing on, my favorite part is always the buttons. Um, I made the button uh, full width, text purple 700, gave it a border, border purple 700. I rounded it, so let's see what that looks like, great. Uh, you'll notice that these have to be, or these there should be some padding added. Um, the padding I use is usually PY4, so top and bottom, spaces out really nice. And there also should be a margin top of four. There you go, perfect. What you'll notice is that in this version though, there's a hover effect here. And um, to achieve this, it's actually um, a little bit complex. Uh, I do hover text white hover shadow Excel, and I add the typical transitions, although this time I make it 150 to uh, make it go a little bit longer. 150, Let's see how that looks, right? And now we're missing one. Uh, we are missing hover BG purple 16, so which is gonna go here. Hover BG purple, not 16, 700 rather. Perfect, that's exactly what we're looking for. All right, so this one is actually complete. If we look at the original here, we refresh both, 
they are identical, which is great because this means we can move on to the next one. However, I will copy this one just to speed up the tutorial because it is pretty much the same thing and just remove this here. And this should give us exactly what we are looking for on that last column. Let's see. Perfect. It's exactly what we need. So now styling the middle one. Uh, this one is same concept, just purple, kind of inverted. Uh, the text here is muted. I was thinking about making this muted, but I left it this way. And the button is muted as well. Um, the inspiration shot was a muted button. I'm not sure how I feel about it. Um, maybe it would look better like this, but for the purpose of this tutorial, I left it that way. So continuing on, um, I added a text white class, BG purple 700. I added that text white because all the text within is gonna be white. Uh, rounded LG, very similar to the other two columns. Shadow. Okay, of course we're missing padding six. Great, now we're gonna style this pretty similarly. Uh, this is going to be just text LG because white is already defined, uh, the class is already added. Uh, here, we are going to use just a margin top of one, but within here we're gonna make it font bold text for Excel. Beautiful, that's exactly what we're looking for. This of course is also gonna be text SM, just to keep the theme going. Uh, and we're gonna make it opacity 75 to mute it a little bit with a margin top of two, just like the other columns. Um, and looks great, looks exactly what we're trying to do, what we're trying to replicate. Continuing down here, we gotta do the same thing with these. MY2. Uh, for those of you wondering, I actually can't even remember what shortcut I just used to do that. I think it's Command D. Uh, it's great to learn little tricks within your your editor. Uh, it really speeds things up when you're when you're writing code. Uh, so I do recommend looking the, looking up the little shortcuts that uh, I don't know what you use, but I use VS Code. Uh, they're really great. Uh, text SM and MT4 for these. Perfect, right? That's exactly what we need. However, you'll notice I forgot the margin right here, which I can add right now. Margin right of four. I also forgot all the hover effects. I'm getting ahead of myself. So uh, to fix this, we just need hover, shadow XL, transition duration 100, I believe, and ease it out. Yep, looks great. And then we need to style the button. So the button's a little bit different in this case. W full, text purple 700, BG white, rounded, opacity 75 to make it muted, right? So that looks like that. Uh, of course, we do need to make the padding top and bottom four and give it a margin top of four to align it properly. Looks great. Uh, now we need the hover classes, so hover, make it shadow one, oops, not shadow 100, opacity, which makes it unmuted, which looks really good. And we need to give it a shadow, hover, shadow, excel, just like the other buttons. Perfect, perfect. All right, uh, just to save some time, I'm gonna copy these because they're the exact same transitions. Put them in there. And as you can see, everything works as expected. Uh, we are also missing transition. Oh, no, we have them here. We have transitions here, we have transitions here. So it looks like we're actually finished. This is the complete desktop version, right? Uh, so to get to this point, it, it was fun. Um, the real trouble starts when we open it in a mobile view. And this is what I was talking about. So uh, as you can see, the Tailwind keeps everything in a one third column setup, right? Uh, Tailwind is mobile, mobile first. So what it does is it, it interprets the styles first for mobile and then you can, you can as the developer, kind of tell it how to change these to make it work on uh, larger screens. Uh, a great example of this is if I added flex column here. 
right? Kind of fixes the issue, but not really because it forces every column to be its own row, but they're still uh, one third width, right? So if we look on the desktop, it now breaks it here, which we don't want. So the way around this is to make to, to set a, a different class for a medium and up viewport size, which would be MD colon flex row. So what this basically means is on mobile or anything below medium will be flex column, anything above will be flex row. This fixes the issue on the um, desktop site, but still broken here, right? How do we fix this? Using the same thing. So we know that mobile will probably want to have the full width of every column, but we want one third on the desktop site. So full width, MD colon, and then one third width. How does this look? Well, it fixed this one and it kept this one uh, in the right spot. So uh, that's exactly what we need to do. We need to take this and fix those columns that way. And this looks much better, but we could probably use a little bit of padding on the left and right side of the container that holds the columns. Uh, how you do this is uh, use X, so that's left and right, PX2, right? And that fixes that. I think that looks okay. We can even go PX3 maybe. It's a little bit better. However, this is going to be on the desktop site too, and we don't need that. We don't want to take more padding from the left and right when, when the viewport's large, right? So we could just do MD PX0. And desktop version is perfect, right? We're probably going to want to add some uh, spacing here. It's a little bit awkward. It's like sitting on, on, on top of each other. So how we would do this is basically find the containers of each column and add margin bottom of 10 and then anything over medium margin bottom of zero. Let's see. Okay, so that looks good. What about here? Perfect. What if we removed this? What would that look like? See, it, it tries to keep each column the same length. And so because this has a margin bottom of 10, which we can see by highlighting it like so, that yellow part, um, it's going to stretch these to be the same length. And we do not want that. So um, we're definitely going to want to leave that in and keep maintain the same width that way. So if I copy this now, oops, that's a button here and here. You'll see that I added it here too because there should be some space above the bottom of the viewport. And that's exactly what we're looking for. One little tweak that I do, do want to make before I call this done uh, is actually remove this right padding. I'm not sure what the effect would be. I'm not seeing any uh, weird things happening on the, uh, on the browser now, but I do want to re uh, remove it for... Um, sorry, I, this is uh, reversed. I want to make this zero and then for MD at a margin right of four, make this zero and for MD make a margin right of four. So let's refresh and see what happens. Perfect. Transitions still work, obviously. And if we look here, still looks great. So that's the final product. The code for this example will be in the description below on my GitHub. Consider giving it a star uh, if you like it. Uh, it's got a license in there if you want to use it for anything. I mean, it's, it's open source, so go ahead. Um, and please do consider sub subscribing. Uh, I will be making more of these, so if you enjoy it, I'd love to have you uh, subscribe to this channel and we can maybe grow a little bit of a community around building this stuff or any other topics. I currently work as a full stack developer, so uh, if you have any questions, I would love to cover any topic related to development. Uh, it definitely is my passion. So thank you for watching and do consider subscribing.